All right. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, everybody. Hi, my name is Jess. I'm here with uh, my friend Charles, and we're here with Cocktails in the Conversation with the uh, Conference Center. And today, sitting down with our friends, the Q Brothers. What What's up? up friends? Hello. Hey. We're good. We've got GQ, Poss, and Jay here. Yeah. Yeah. How's it going, friends? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Hold on. If I'm gonna talk to you this close, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> mess it up, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm mess is that an official Q Brothers? Oh, it is. It is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come back. Is that's branded? That's Q branded. Let me see that. Get close again. What? <laughs> How long have you had that? That's is a that fish. Swag? Is that yeah. swag? Does that qualify as bona fide swag right there? Yeah, yeah. We had a friend who's making them for the military and was like, yo, we're going to hook up some friends. If you get us your logo, I can get it. I can mail these out to you. So um, it was a very nice gift from uh, a buddy, Ian Kwan in Chicago. And the uh, name of the company, I think, is QRX Connects. And I was like, do you want me to like do anything with this? He's like, dude, we just we had to make it for the military anyway. So I was just hooking friends up. But yeah, you can shout us out. So I'm shouting them out. <laughs> Even in crisis, sell, sell, sell. I guess that's the first thing I did. I wasn't planning yeah. on doing that at all. I really. Our, our state is in shutdown. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Okay. Well, before before I go further, I'm yeah. going to tell you all what I'm drinking, and I want to know what everyone has in their cup. So yeah. I was explaining a minute ago. I'm not a lush, but I have two options right now. Mm -hmm. I've got mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. ginger. Yeah, you're not a lush. That uh, what you say. Mm -hmm. I am a parent in quarantine. Is that synonymous? Um, no, I, I got a gin julep, but I don't, it's because I didn't have bourbon and I'm not really enthusiastic about the gin in a julep. I think it's fine, but I wanted to use mint because, because mint. And yeah. then, and then I got, this is, this is what I'm much more excited about is a, is a ginger beer margarita. Nice. nice. This is my current jam. So that's what I'm drinking. Charles, what do you got? I am drinking a uh, cognac uh, concoction. Uh, this is a little bit of cognac, some oranges, a little bit of vanilla sugar, and some demerara sugar. You know, it's hey. like a, it's like a that's a that's a cone that's a concoction. I like that concoction. Hey, there you go. That's what I'm drinking. And I'm trying to perfect it because this is this is my summer drink. I love oranges. I love cognac, and this is like makes it. We, we were talking a little bit before we got on. Jay was saying, like, ah, you can't drink dark liquor too early. This makes it okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta find ways to, you know, work. Right. Right? Nice. What about you all? Uh, right now I'm drinking water, but in a minute I'm going to go make a Negroni. <clears throat> so huh? I'll, be, I'll be back with Negroni's that. Negroni's trending. Up our, the friends, our friends last week were doing Negroni too. Oh, nice. Well, in that case, yeah. I'm going to do something different. <laughs> I, I'm yeah, buying nobody else's drink. stuff. I mean, they, 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 you know what? I'm going to make a Paloma then. Forget it. Okay. Okay. See That's you. <laughs> I got a Venetian spritz. Venetian spritz. You, you gotta, you gotta share, share what's inside of it. It's a two to one to one. Uh, you can use a bitter, some Italian bitter, uh, some Amaro basically. So like a Campari or an Aperol mm -hmm. or a, um, or a Chinar even. And then you do two parts that, one part sparkling wine, one part sparkling water, and then you throw an olive in there. Dang, nice. bro. Good. Fancy. I know. I, I mean, it's really it. not like, there's no shaking. There's no like stirring. You just like literally, and then you go. That's no, I know. It's just a lot of language. And I think when you put <laughs> olives in something, it feels more real. I guess. I mean, most people like the spritz when we were in Edinburgh, like the spritz was crazy. Remember, it was blowing up all over Europe. Like it finally made its way out of Italy. And then when we came back the next year, it was like they Aperol clearly like did some marketing in the States. And the next year it was like spritz is everywhere. But but what people don't realize is that every city in Italy has their own version of the spritz. So they use the same ingredients, but there's like slight differences. Um, like some places, like the classic spritz uses an orange or an orange peel, but in Venice you always put a, you always put an olive. And that was your fun fact of the day with JQ. Oh, 
on pay. I say, and you're being very Venetian. Like you're being a Venetian purist with your spritz then. Hey, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not mad at it. it. It helps me feel like traveled right now in this time of like locking. I'm trying to get somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Okay. okay. I appreciate we got, that. We got G, one. Are, you, are you drinking, G? I am drinking something unique. It's a uh, hop. It's a sparkling hop water with chamomile tea. So I'm trying to chill out with y'all. I don't drink alcohol anymore. So I was like, you know what? This is going to be my cocktail today. So, um, But I think that's cocktails kind of a state of mind, right? It is. Believe me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I like, I like that. Cocktail is a state of mind. Well, because you're pulling the chamomile element, which is like, you know, got the same mindset of like chilling out and relaxing, yeah. you know. And hops too. Hops are, uh, hops. you know, cousin. Hops are a cousin of marijuana, so um, that's always good thing. That's always. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's always good. That's always good yeah. thing. That's always good. The state of Illinois recognize that. Shaz <laughs> uh, just says no shame in G's game. So see, we've got we've got uh, yep. advocates for your position. Cool. Yeah. There What's most important is is building community, y'all, and coming together to have uh, conversations. So, uh, Pops, I know you don't have your drink yet, but if you want to raise your water, uh, cheers to you all. Hey, cheers to y'all. And cheers to just cocktails and conversation and, like I said, building community right now. So, cheers. Word Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Cheers. Being together apart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Somebody's so, having kombucha. Kombucha. Being together yeah. apart. Being together apart. That's a great place to start because I want to ask you, like, what has this quarantine, what has this been, thing been like being together with you all? But, like, literally, I'm talking to three people in three different cities right now. And, I mean, I guess we're kind of all apart. It doesn't really matter what, what your metro is because no one's really seeing each other anyway. But, like, what does being together apart look like for you guys these days? Who wants to start that one? You're going to get a very different answer from each of us, I believe. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Um, I mean, for us as a group, you mean? I mean, as a group, yeah, I guess. Or, as a or group. like our personal experience what? with trying to be together apart with the world. I think, I, think it's, I think it's dealer's choice as far as how you want to, like, what's the most emergent facet of that question to you as a human? Yeah, I mean, I it just, like, because the three of us are on, on the call, it makes me think of, like, how I'm connecting with my artistic family um, and how we're trying to stay together a while apart. Um, you know, to some extent, we are prepared for this because we live in three different cities anyway, um, and we've been working um via zoom and via google docs for the last seven eight years non-stop always on a video call and in the same document writing so for us that transition wasn't tough it's wasn't just google, that it was, it was google google hangouts before it was zoom just wanted to clarify because you said zoom seven years ago i was like damn it <laughs> nope don't right. you wish that we all invested in zoom like a minute ago because yeah. now it's a thing yeah. Wow. Really? Um, and, then, and then like uh you know so we you know for us it's like that part's cool but then we were used to like every month or two months we get together and have like a five day or week long intensive and then we go back and actually our writing apart was sort of half writing and half incubation and now we're like trying to live in this half writing half incubation zone without our periods of intense um togetherness yeah. uh, and so that's been like that's hard you know we're trying to do things trying to trying to bring people together we got d we do you know we release the kids album we do kids dance parties on friday afternoons on Saturday nights, me and G are DJing. On Tuesday nights, the four of us get together and write a song from scratch. Starting at like 8.30 p.m. Central, we just go for two, three, four hours until the song is complete. And then we put the song up on SoundCloud that night. So we're trying to do, you know, things that um, are a little more like immediate. Like it's hard really right now to work on a play that's going to come out in a year. Because it, it feels a little bit like, fuck, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I want some, I want to connect right now. So the immediacy of this streaming stuff, 
it's really spoken to you know our need to for human connection i think you know mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that makes sense what about what about uh pause you know or or G, any other thoughts on that? Like how you all are doing right now in this moment? And I'm, I'm curious, Jay, about that idea, right? Of like, you all have been using virtual ways to connect for so long, you know, but then, I mean, we're kind of still technically probably in that window that you would have been apart, mm. but it's just mm-hmm. something about like knowing that you can't, that makes right. it even harder, you know? So I'm curious about, about any of that, you know? Well, I mean, I'll say that the struggle, like <clears throat> the struggle in terms of what our art form is, be it in theater or in music um, or, you know, in any, what we do is performance, right? So um, it always typically requires an audience. Now, obviously some of that performance can happen on camera and stuff like that. But even then, at the end of the day, there is always a process where we come together physically in order to work out whatever it is we're working on, particularly when it comes to like the musical element of it. So, um, and then, I mean, once, like, once this, once this pandemic hit and nobody could be together, like, we were going to have, like, the most smokiness, like, year and a half or two years, like, looking forward in terms of everything that we had going on and everything just, like, everything just, like, fell apart. Then, like, like the Roots album, things fall apart. Um, like, um, basically like without without an audience without an audience to also be there like that's the that's the fifth member of our of the component of us there's me gj Jax, and an audience so not having that not having whatever that immediate community is kind of forced us i think to uh like jay said really go back into these moments of incubation which is in some in some ways has been kind of cool because i think it has allowed us uh the sort of like bandwidth to think about our art um to allow certain ideas that we've been thinking about that we want to put in our art to marinate um and um and also frankly like figure out frankly the shit that we don't want to do and and push that to the wayside you know what i mean um but like we definitely like we miss each other and we miss the people who came to see us you know what Mm -hmm. i mean yeah. yeah, theater has that that way of doing that, right? Where it's just like, as artists, we're up on the stage and you're, you know, you're performing for and with these people, you mm-hmm. know? Uh, and so that type of interaction, were you all interrupted in a show that you were doing? Um, well, we were, we were in the process of uh, developing a bunch of shows, uh, many, of, many of which were going to be produced at the end of this year and the beginning of next year. I think even into... Uh, uh, 2022. Um, I was sp- specifically also doing a show uh, in Boston and like literally like, you know, we kind of got, I mean, I don't know if it's a pink slip, but we got some sort of slip and they were like, you got to go, <laughs> you know? So like in the middle, in the middle of the work week, you know, so yes. wow. it was, uh, it was, it was abrupt and it was abrupt and somewhat traumatic, I guess. Gee, we were in Atlanta, right? Yeah, the rest of us were in Atlanta um, touring one of our shows, and we were doing three, three performances at Kennesaw outside of Atlanta, Kennesaw State University. And we made we, we had the first one happen, and the the dean of the school and everybody came backstage afterwards, shaking our hands and like you know, um, <laughs> and we were like, "Don't shake our hands." I mean, I don't know, but like that's when people started getting weird about it but they didn't mm. give a fuck. They just like, yeah, I put it like old people, everybody shaking our hands. We were like, all right, if you're cool with this, so are we, but we don't really know what's going on. And they're like, it was such a fantastic show. We can't wait for the next two nights. And we're like, really? Are the next two nights going to happen? Because everything we're hearing, this was right when all the schools were like, you know, they were like, yeah, we're, we're going to, we're open. And not, we haven't heard any word. And then like two hours later, the mm-hmm. announcement happened that every university in the country was closed and this was at a university. And so mm-hmm. that, that the next day no one was going to be able to go to school. And so we went to the airport at like five in the morning and missed the next two shows. But, uh, and then the, we had like three or four more stops on the tour planned and, you know, university gigs are good, good money for us. So um, that was, I mean, between that and the rest of our gigs that have been canceled, like, yeah, 
all pretty much all our this year significant yeah very significant yeah but so, but again like i said it's an opportunity whatever i mean all of, yeah looking at it in, in the positive light which you kind of have to figure out a way to do that mm -hmm. like it you can turn this into an opportunity you know yeah you know we started funky fridays the djing uh uh the djing for the kids we put out a kids album um um, Jay and I are working on a mixtape that's going to come out. I put out a solo album, um, and uh, we're doing currently we're, something we're like group, the Rat Pack. We're yeah, like we're right. going, we're going. We, you know, we got to keep it moving. I got, a solo, I got a solo album, solo album coming out a week from. Yeah, G has. Friday. There you go. Called the Amalgam album under the yeah. Music Party. It's all electronic. I've been spending tons of time making electronic music, just tons and tons of time. This is out here in LA, like. My favorite shit to do when it's not quarantine is going to raves in the like the underground downtown underground scene, and I like go to see DJs that, from around the world that are sick, but like in pretty intimate environments. Um, there's a there's a really really cool electronic scene <laughs> happening in LA, and I'm, I'm just like dove headfirst into it like a year and a half ago, and now that like, none of that is happening, I am just like. Because in tandem with that, I've been producing electronic music and just kind of like, but but going to those events and dan I'm and dancing my ass off for like six hours, like is how I study. It's how I've learned to study electronic music. So it goes hand in hand <clears throat> with creating it. And so yeah. while the, the 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 opportunity to dance to other DJs has been cut off, Jay and I have been. DJing Saturday night parties, and uh, I started something. We started something called the Zoom Boom Room, and so you can you can hear us DJ on Twitch. But then, if you want to dance with other people in a space, you 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 follow the Zoom link on another device, and we have a core group of people showing up to dance every Saturday night. And I'm like, shit, nothing's really stopped for me except I got a little even more concentrated in um, the field of. Per production and i've been wanting to dj um you know for a while and like now I'm, I'm doing that for you know like regularly for like five weeks straight so like i'm learning a, a ton as a producer as a but DJ. isn't it isn't isn't that interesting though like what you're talking about like part of the draw of like going to the scene is like sampling flavors and like feeling like you're getting like a like a musical education of like who's doing what and what's happening and like the energy exchange with other people that are there and like yeah. that is i mean that is so similar to why theater is theater you know what i mean like yeah. it you can see a show but depend you know we'd say oh you saw the matinee show you saw the friday night show and people are seeing the same show but like totally different shows mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. depending on the house they're with <laughs> you know why yeah. do it live if it's not gonna change because of who's there right Right. I mean, yeah. it's inherent to the art form, you know? Yeah. 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 But it's interesting to think about, like, kind of, like, innovation and technology and, like, what can you recreate and how, what, what does the aesthetic, like, how is the aesthetic able to regenerate and where is it lacking? Because humans can never fully replace humans, like, yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it starts with what they start, what you start generally doing and what everyone is trying to do, and we're still in this stage of, is that you're trying to recreate uh, and simulate situations that existed prior, right? So like Paz was in a play and they're, and they did the play on Zoom, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it, it was, uh, it was the misanthrope. It was pr uh, produced by Moliere in the park in uh, Brooklyn, New York. And uh, because this was going to be their inaugural season, but <laughs> didn't happen, right? So that, that was actually, that was another gig that fell through. So, um, but they innovatively decided that to put on a production of the play online. Go, go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm just saying like, so they, they put out the play on Zoom and I, I watched it. It was dope and there was talented people in it, but like something's not, it doesn't yeah. quite work, right? And right. like even even our Saturday night DJing with the Zoom room, it's like it's dope, but there's something it's right now we're still trying to simulate what was. But then what happens is we'll use this technology and then like new ideas will pop off from using it. 
that will change the experience to make it more authentic to the medium we're now in, which is not live, right? Which is not face to face. And then we'll, I think we'll start to see some sort of hybrid situation that is cool and authentic and like, you know, and it, but kind of more, a more realized version of what it's trying to be because we're figuring it out as we go, right? Yeah, yeah, because right. there's, there's no turning back, right? So now we're already, we've already like broken through this, this dam of possibility where everybody's going hard in the paint on like this new technology and being together apart. And like that's affecting entertainment. Like, how do you perform with the lag time, right? So now mm -hmm. technology is working, the people who are creating that sort of technology are working extremely hard to create in real time um, without lag production. And, um, and, and so that is gonna change. It's not like we're just gonna go back to like regular events and theater. Like we're not gonna leave this behind because th now the possibility in everyone's mind is, we might wind up back here more often than we know or think or anything. But also yeah. within theater, there's been a movement for a decade or more, um, or maybe forever um, of like multimedia, 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 you know? People are always like, that became like a hot like term, a trendy term in, in theater. Like, oh, is it a show with like multimedia? Meaning like, are you gonna project something or are you gonna like also have, like there's some really cool Brechtian stuff where like I'm speaking to the audience, but there's also a camera on me showing me on a screen to them. That's not gonna be like cool or innovative anymore. That's gonna be like redundant and there, or like, or it will be cool, but we're gonna have to switch our perspective to make it um, something different or incorporate what we're learning now into live theater. It's, I mean, it's all gonna be, yeah. it's all cool. It's Which is also, cool. I mean, frankly, like it makes me think about like hip hop, like hip, hip hop been through, throughout the, the decades since his, it, it existed since like the, the very late sixties. Um, every bit of every bit of um political change that happened and every bit of tech technological change that happened has uh somehow or another been adopted by these kids that turned something made something out of nothing and mm -hmm. essentially that's what the world of theater is going to have to do now with the fact that we that this it like this technology now exists in our lexicon of our theater and so we're gonna have to like incorporate it if for no other reason, because this shit might happen again. <laughs> no. well, and, so. and I mean, when you're thinking about virtual audiences and this kind of thing too, I think it also brings up the question of like, as much as we can all agree that things aren't, there's no such thing as like going back to normal after this. And there, so what does the new normal look like? How long will house sizes have to be smaller? And, or people that used to attend live theater, how many people will feel for a period deterred from that, you know, and what does that look like? And how do you start to incorporate the idea of like, if for no, if if not just for archive, how do I compose this work in a way that it can be accessed in a multimedia facet moving mm -hmm. ahead? Should, whether it's part of the, the the plan as far as how it is offered to an audience, or whether it becomes the contingency plan, you know, how do you create work that can withstand? the transfer to multimedia when it's meant to be a live affair, you know, and, and I think- And, and, and Frank- uh -oh. oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Don't worry. The gang's all here. <laughs> Don't worry, I made it. I know you were all oh. scared. Um, yeah, not, I mean, th that's, that's an interesting question. Hold on, I'm on I think that, that like, <clears throat> I think that um, not only that, but like, how about like reach? You know, like, like theaters had a problem mm -hmm. for many years. The fact that like so many kids we would go do workshops for were like never seen a play. Like why is, you know, the putting something on live every single time while exciting is a very old, old predating all technology, predating movie and TV, tech, you know, technology. Uh, theater is and it and it's and it it because of that the cost is crazy and no one can afford tickets you know what i mean so and especially now that you're gonna go to like what what will it be 50 people houses and less like ticket prices are gonna go even crazier um and so to me it's like it's about ability for artists and their art to reach more people and 
accessibility for people who may not have it to buy a ticket like that, you know? Yeah, I think I think that this is, you know, uh, we got to be able to, because we can't let theater die, you know? Because just like, you know, um, G, how you were saying, you go and you feel this music and, and, and that's why you go, you know, why you're <clears> dancing, <throat> you're feeling it, you know? And when we're performing this stuff, that's why it doesn't quite translate from, you know, a live, where there's archival, whatever it is, you know, a video, you know, a play that's turned video, it, it's not the same because that feeling isn't there. And so I think we have to make sure as the artists of our time right now that coming out of this, we don't let that happen. We don't let ticket prices go up, you know, because uh, uh, theaters are, are needing to meet the operational costs. And when we return after that, we have to make sure that theater stays alive because, man, when you, I, I teach, right? I teach and I go into schools, underrepresented schools. So a lot of people, just like you, you know, who haven't seen a play before. And it's just like, when they see that play, it's like, oh, that wasn't a movie. That was real. That was right. That was palpable. You know, that was a, it was an emotion in that room that all of these 50, 100, how many ever people felt at the same time. Mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. how do we keep that alive? How do we how do we try to keep that alive right now, right? And in, in our and that's that's kind of the hope. That was the when me and you know Jess got together and talked about this. That was kind of the hope of this thing of of like community and conversation that like feels like we're connecting even though we're not. Like how do we ensure that our art doesn't go and and that ability to connect and people make people feel. How do we protect that right now and in the future? I, I think we really have to keep an open mind about the definition of live theater and about connecting. And I would hesitate to say we're not doing it right now or that this isn't live because it is. Like, I do think we have to focus on, on uh, advancing the technology to have a more immediate and um, visceral response. But, but what I, one point I was making about having the Saturday night dance parties is like, I, I am feeling the music. I am feeling the community of dancers. I'm dancing my ass off for hours in my apartment. I'm spending way less money and like going to bed way earlier and like feeling much healthier because like, frankly, the schedule works with like a, pro like a productive lifestyle in terms of like what we have to do business wise. And I'm like, damn for all for the for for the for you know if we if we can redefine what we consider live theater that might be our way of preserving the art form more than struggling to uphold a model that has fallen apart or may fall apart yeah all that said as well i think uh i mean i have complete like confidence and a surety that um, now more than ever that people need people. Mm -hmm. And, um, and when, when we have the opportunity to be together again, I have no doubt that, that, uh, that people are going to seek out the opportunity, seek out the opportunities to go and share these stories and sit in the theater and commune and do all these things. Um, if for no other reason than last Friday, I went on a run and uh, it was like the first beautiful spring day in, in Brooklyn. <laughs> and I swear to God, nobody was, nobody was uh, observing social distancing at all. Like big groups of people hanging out, cops were even driving by and stuff like that. But it was just because I think everybody was like, like we need, I need to be next to this person. I need to actually like, they, we need human contact. Right. So uh, I think if for no other reason, we just have to find a theater has to find a way to make sure that we're bringing in people and we're making the stories, you know, not just not just physically accessible, but like financially accessible. Yeah. Real, real. Hey, listen, um, I, I love that you said that, man, that, that like it is people needing this connection right and more more than ever right now right yeah. and, and they're like nope no masks no no social distance don't don't even come for me i, I just gotta be <laughs> right. so something that i've been needing for 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 quite some time i can't bring my they're still open 
can't bring myself to do it. Uh, I need some heralds right now. I got to I got to be honest. I need some. I heroin. thought you were gonna say heroin. I was uh, like, what? I thought you were gonna say a handcuff. I was like, you look pretty good. Get that. I need I need some Harold's chicken. Well, it's, it, it, it is kind of like heroin. Harold's is like heroin. It's a kind. It's, it's better. It's better than heroin. I, the mild, I cannot baby. bring myself to go into that line. I just, I just, I know that they are not like you know yeah. disinfecting to my standards. So what what are you all? <laughs> There's enough up. vinegar. There's enough vinegar in there. You don't gotta worry. Yeah, that's probably. <laughs> might I be have to, I have to get anecdotal here for a second because we wrote a play for the Chicago Children's Choir, a version of the Odyssey, and we had about 120 students with us. And one of the first workshops, we were like, you know, we want to incorporate what you guys love about Chicago and what what you what defines it for you. And immediately, someone's like, Harold's mild. Harold's Mild. <laughs> and we were like, all right, well, we're putting Harold's Mild in there. That was like the first thing. I am in dire need right now. I'm born in Chicago. So, so Har- Harold's Chicken and Vintner's Chips uh, are, are the two things that are like, okay, this is, this, I'm from Chicago. This is in my blood. I cannot do anything about it. I want to turn it to y'all. What are you in need of right now that you cannot have? And, you know, it, mm. it doesn't have to be deep. It, if you want to, can be. But like, we we wrote a whole song about this last night. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll go. I'll go first. Time away from my children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's real. That's real. Just some, just some time. Just really, just some time. Just where they're not always. Where I'm not always accessible to them. You know what I'm saying? Oh God, that sounds so nice. You need some out of the office hours. I get it. Yeah, That's for real. That sounds so good. For real. Um, Boss, remind me, how old are your kids, Boss? What? Uh, Three, three and seven. Okay. Yeah. So you also probably are dealing with like the the wide swath of need and the definition of need too, because what you need at three and what you need at seven is also very different. Yep. And we all admit needs are relative, just like Harold's chicken, like that's a need and as much as it's relative. (laughs) I do not agree. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, whoa, 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 lady. Everybody needs some Harold's chicken. Everybody, okay, it's a a unifier. That's not just Charles's need. That is everyone. I stand corrected. The world needs Harold's chicken. Everybody needs Harold's chicken. What about you all? What, what other what other needs are you? No, are you mine's, uh, mine's the opposite, and in a, in a in a way because Pass is like time away from the kids. I'm like, I need time with with all their kids. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Nice. I am hey, definitely I, missing. I'm gonna I'm gonna send them to you, bro. It's honestly, it's what I it's what I miss more than anything. <clears throat> well, I, you're like you're like isolated Uncle G over there, yeah. I am. He's I a am. pod of one. I'm I'm fine with all of it. I can handle isolation. I actually thrive in isolation, but like I just want to hug the little kids. That's my that's my thing. I, my Come back, is- man. Come join the pod. I'll do the grocery <laughs> shopping. We're good. I'll, I'll be there soon. I mean, to go along with Charles and Paz and the opposite of G, I mean, like just having somebody come watch my kids so I can go out with my wife and have, I don't care if it's fucking McDonald's at this point, you know what I mean? Just like, just to like commune in that way and like not have the children around, but also, I mean, I would prefer something other than McDonald's, even though they got that breakfast on lock, as possible Harold, say. Harold, <laughs> exactly. They got that breakfast on lock. Harold's would be absolutely wonderful. Um, but yeah, like a combination of that, just like, you know, because before this, I was only getting one of those a month usually. So like, right. but that was like really needed. <laughs> yeah. And so then you take it out completely and it's like, ah. I need like, um, I need a little sports in my life. Yeah. To play or to watch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, either. I mean, I'm, I'm. <clears throat> I, you know, G watches a lot of basketball. I watch some, but I'm a big tennis fan. Even tennis, which seems idiotic to me that they don't just play anyway. It's only one on one anyway. Um, just play. It, you could you you'd be the only game in town. ESPN would become the tennis channel for the next three months. Yeah, yeah, what happened, what <laughs> like, what yeah who's running that operation? What happened with um, that French coach guy? Who <clears> like, who's hey, he's supposed to be starting some. We'll see if it really happens. Uh, but anyway, yeah, 
I miss I miss watching sports. You know, I do I do like it. It's, it's just it's a it's a it's another one of those things. And even just like recently, because we got the first nice days, I'm just like, oh, it'll be nice yeah. to hit up a Cubs game and like bring the kids to the Cubs game. You know. Well, I think that's I think that hits it on the head too. Is that like seasons and like you have kind of like seasonal expectations. Like you have muscle memory of like what you feel like you should be doing right now. Like having a beer outside at Wrigley or whatever. You know what I mean? Like White Sox are cheaper. I'm just saying. <laughs> Okay. That's the biggest well, Cubs fan in the room. I was about to say, I feel like I need a show of hands of whose socks are Cubs because I don't even know if you guys are on the same side of the sports fence as far as north side, south side baseball debates here. Me and Jax are jumping ship and moving to the socks this year. For mm -mm. political okay. reasons for me and also they're more family friendly ballpark and they're not $80 a ticket. Anymore. I just like the uniforms better. The socks have always been a more badass uniform. I, I've always liked the socks better too, but I'm also from Atlanta, so bravo. Plus, we made way. a song once for Frank Thomas. Braves all the way. He was really nice to us, so yeah. you know, kind yeah. of, you know. For Frank Thomas? Yeah. yeah, we ran into him at a Big where he was he was peddling his malt liquor called Big Hurt Beer, and we left, and Jay and I were a little enhanced on like an edible, and I said, what would G do right now? And Jay was like, G would go back in and tell Frank Thomas we're going to write a song about his beer. And I was like, let's do it. And then we went in and we said to Frank Thomas, hey, we're going to write a song about your beer. And he's like, okay. And we tweeted it to him and he retweeted it. He sent his personal assistant over with a huge, like, multi pallet case of his Big Hurt beer, which stayed in G Jay's fridge for like two years because it was awful. Because it tasted terrible. <laughs> it tasted terrible. It was terrible. But small anecdote attached to that is that uh, I, 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 maybe a year or two later, <clears throat> we were doing a uh, workshop, a intensive workshop at, um, what's Miss LC school? Latin. Latin. At Latin. Yeah, at Latin school. And, uh, you know, and, for the underprivileged communities in Chicago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, and we were doing it for a bunch of different classes. Most of them were literary classes, but we also had some theater kids. And uh, we met a young lady who turned out to be Frank Thomas's daughter. And she yeah, was cool. like, she loves you guys. He loves you guys. <laughs> like, he, like, he still walks my, around playing that song. It's like my dad just <laughs> plays that song for everyone we meet. <laughs> And, it's just, like, and, then, awesome. and then you just like politely say, oh, yeah, and it gave us beer. <laughs> right. yeah, uh, I was going to say the song. Malt liquor style beer that's still in the fridge, I think. I think no, no, no. Connor finished it. Yeah. Connor and I finished it one night, I think. Or was I was <laughs> back and forth. Um, oh, that's hilarious. You know, I have to say, going back, first of all, all the comments now are about Harold's and Harold's Mild going on on the, on the <laughs> side, which is amazing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, God, I got to get some Harold's now. It is, the, you know, like the, that, that hilarious meme, we are the virus. Like, we all just need Harold's and we'll stop being the virus. Oh, hey, I miss playing softball with you, too. There was a little comment about our softball team. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. What, soft, what, what softball? Uh, uh, shakes? No, we play for Q Brothers Collaboration. Q Lab. Okay. Q Lab, we call it. On Wednesday. We play, even though we're all equity, we play on the non equity night on Wednesday because, you know, the equity <clears throat> people just be having their noses yeah. in there and shit. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab my drink. You guys. Yeah, yeah it's about time, right. Poss. Come on. My, my cocktail is True Chicago beer in a shot. My drink is two drinks. Is it my lord? You want to get? Uh, wanna no, I, d I ran out of Malort. I would. I, I haven't. I haven't restocked. How does a person <laughs> run out of Malort in your house? I, so yeah. I Malort. When yeah. I, I when I got married like five years ago, I we had Benny's cater in or whatever, like do all the liquor, and I threw in a bunch of bottles of Malort because I thought they would go at the end of the night, but they didn't. <laughs> and so I had Malort at the house for a while, but I think I, I finally exhausted the supply after like, I, I got married like four years ago. So congrats. So we, we got a bottle of Malort um, out of a uh, holiday uh, grab bag. And uh, so I ended up with it and I brought it home and my husband's family lives in Idaho. They were coming for Christmas. I said, we absolutely have to give your dad this bottle and tell him like, this is like, primo a plus chicago liqueur you know and he's like a farmer he's like a rural like idaho cattle like rancher so 
So he's all about, sure, yeah, booze in a bottle, great, you know? And he takes this swig, and we, like, gave it to him just for the purpose of photo documenting him, like, oh, having yeah. it for the first time. Oh, Lord face. face. Yeah, so he brought it, he brought home open liquor through the airport just so that he could have everyone that works. And he was going to, like, bill it the same way to my knowledge. He's <laughs> like, tell, tell all the guys, oh, oh, yeah, this is a very special, rare Chicago liqueur, like, you know, oh, and man. have all the guys that work with him take yeah. swings That's a good Chicago-centric question. Where was your first taste of Malort? Do you, do you remember? I remember mine. <sighs> what was it? Honestly, oh, it, wow. might, it might be Geo's. It might be Geo's over... Nice. Uh, Damon and Ainsley. Yeah, Damon. Yeah. Mine was yeah. uh, the Green Mill, about uh, maybe like 2008, 2009. That's uh, Chicago centric. That's a good place to have it. Yeah, because my friend Johnny who used to run O'Donovan's. You know that place on Irving yeah. Park, and like he, a big bodybuilder guy. He's like, my favorite thing to do is go after the bar closes. I go to Green Mill and I see hot girls from across the bar, and I order them shots of Malort. And I was like, what's Malort? He's like, I'll show you. And so we went and he did it and he got me one. I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> um, did he have a success rate with that or was it just a punk women? He like, just, he was just like, he likes to fuck with people. I love Malort. I yeah, love I like it too. First time oh, it. <clears throat> it tastes like the booze version of drinking like, like some sort of fuel, like it, gasoline or something. Yeah, it's just gasoline and grapefruit rind. I love both of those things. Yeah, I like it too. Oh. Shout out to the, the Q Brothers. Did we share the stage at Lala Kids? Uh, hope it's you, Susie Brack, and the new Jack Lords. And oh, yeah. Said, of yeah. course we did. Yeah. We've done every year for 15 years. So if it was sometime between 15 years ago, which was the first Kids of Palooza, and now definitely was so, us. I've got to ask then, on the topic of Kids of Palooza, is that part of the origin story of, of Buggin? Like, where did the idea or the drive to release this album, for anyone that doesn't know, and I and these guys will obviously speak to it better than I will, but they just released Buggin, their first family friendly album, which we've been listening to here during quarantine and, and love right. it, especially avocados. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, what was the impetus for finally producing like a family centric album? Uh, well, we've been performing on the kids stage at Lollapalooza, like Jay said, for 15 years, and we've been running a workshop alongside of that um, <clears throat> for every day at the festival where we would make up tracks on the spot with kids based on what they wanted. We'd ask them what they want to rhyme about. And then we would freestyle a song and come up with a chorus and they would have a microphone and they'd repeat after us and we'd be recording it. So um, they essentially, they have a track featuring the Q brothers that we create together and that they walk away with. Um, so we have some kids who, have been coming since they were two years old and at 12 years old, they're like, hey, I have, a, I have an album of, of 10 songs with you guys from every year, you know? And, um, and so that like always inspired us. And also it taught us a lot about what, what kids are looking for in music and what they find fun. So I think like not only through freestyling for eight hours a day for four days of a festival straight and not um, swearing and keeping it clean, Cause like, we're not, we didn't consider ourselves like kids entertainers or anything like that. We just had a friend who produced the festival and said, would you guys perform like, you, you know, songs that are clean? And we're like, we're clean. yeah, we're going to produce, we're going to, we're going to perform a lot. Of yeah, we'll make them clean. And then we're like, Hey, we, we started making these tracks. And so, um, with the workshop and everything. And I think one of our producers there was like, you guys should have a, you should have a kid's album. Like I have you perform on the stage every year. And all the other acts have an album and a lot of them have won Grammys and blah, blah, blah. And we're all just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Keep talking to us at the lounge where we're all going to party like for like many, many years. And then um, I think kind of what brought it to a head is the fact that the three other guys in the group now all have multiple children and like the age range is between like two and seven or eight now between the seven kids. So like, I think we're we're all steeped in the world of um, you know kids POV and one thing that I was noting in an interview recently was we're all fans of the abstract and especially when it comes to humor and um, with all of our theater stuff with all of our um, adaptations and everything we've always had to 
somehow find a way to have a handshake with the audience or set up a world or justify why we're about to be as wild and goofy and abstract as we are. And the beauty of it with the kids stuff is we, we have, we, we uphold our standards of entertainment no matter what we're doing. So we're not like dumbing any of the information down for kids, but the coolest part about it is, so our standards are just as high, but we don't have to justify anything because kids live in a world, especially between age two and 10, where they're automatically down with the abstract and with the, um, you know, the wild and goofy side of They us. just go anywhere with you. Cause they, they go anywhere. Yeah. And they don't, they don't can, have <laughs> age having brittled their imaginations. You know, they're still loose, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, no, there's no setup required. Right. So it's been really freeing for us. Really cool. Really exciting stuff. And something I didn't expect at all to enjoy as much as. And we're uh, trying to get that Wiggles money, but not be the Wiggles, you know? <laughs> Jack, I'm out. just kidding. I'm just That's kidding. It. There it but is. No, but to that, like, I joke about that, but ultimately, I would love <laughs> to do like a huge multimedia live stage presentation with like the budget that the Wiggles have, but make it like crazy cool. projection. I'll make it cool. And, and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no offense to the Wiggles. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all offense to why the you, why, why you wiggle why you wiggle judging yo that's called wiggle I'll judge wiggle judge all day long yeah oh well you guys here's charles are you ready i'm ready is this 20 so, questions we like this is 20 questions we like to yes we like to ask our guests some 20 questions towards the end of our hour with them. Um, some of these have been submitted in advance. Mm -hmm. Some of them are random questions from myself and Charles. Um, all three of you can answer. Any one of you can take the torch. Wh however you guys want to want to percolate on it. But uh, yeah, this is our interrogation session. Our 20 questions. Time to percolate. Go. Time to percolate. Let's get it. It's time. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That was not the percolator, my friend. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. <laughs> and then percolate, and it is not the percolator. No. Do it. Do it for me. Do it for me. Charles, you're Come up. On, Charles, I don't do people. I, don't, I do not it's do time people. For the percolator. It's time 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 for the percolator. There you go. <laughs> okay. That's nice. That's an idea. Nice Thank idea. You. <laughs> He used to, to work at Mike. Somebody needs to percolate to that beat. I don't know what we're gonna do now. Somebody. Uh, I worked at Mike Dicka's restaurant with a bunch of guys, older guys who rest in peace because it just closed. Uh, a bunch of guys who used yeah. to uh, be dancers, like at clubs in the '90s in Chicago, and we would all take like spoons to the to the tea makers and like pound on the wall, like in the side station of the restaurant, and we'd create the beat to the percolator, and the guys would dance and everything. Fuck and they, yeah, dude! Nice. Just, just had to give that dick a shout out because somebody asked what classic Chicago restaurant are, do you miss in that one I worked at for like six years. So, yeah, you so, let me let me give a caveat for uh, Jess's uh, twenty questions. This is not a thinking thing, right? Like, yeah, it is, it is not we a just shoot contemplative. Yeah. This like first thing comes to your head. Cool. Good luck with this group. Just saying ahead of time. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, I might dip. So I have a question. I think you all can answer it pretty quick. No, no thinking, no judgment. What really cheesy song do you love? Call me maybe. Call me maybe. Call me maybe. Call me maybe. Hands down. That, wait, 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 wait. Was that a uniform answer? Yeah. No, I was going to say. I was going to say, Joey. Um, concrete. Is that concrete blonde, Joey? But maybe that's not really cheesy. I just. I just no. love it. We're all Jepson. Car 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 Carly Ray all day. <laughs> I mean, I'll, Carly Ray Jepson. I'll jump on that one too. I love or the pirate BRJ. version. Call me. That's BRJ kind of amazing that we didn't discuss that. All three of us just say "Call me, baby." <laughs> Drj all day. Either, all right. Uh, what else you got? Strawberry or jelly jam? Strawberry. Jelly jam. Jelly is jam. No, it's not. Oh, oh grape, grape. See, yeah, yeah. Strawberry or what grape? What you talking jelly? about? <laughs> Dave, strawberry or grape? Or grape. Strawberry. Jam. Grape jam. Strawberry is the only thing I put on a PB and J. Butter. Grape jam. I like the question. Oh. Okay. 
So my question is, what, which celebrity is most likely to have a collection of canes that are just for show? Big Daddy Snoop. Kane? Snoop. <laughs> I Big see. Daddy Kane. Biggie Smalls. No, he actually used his. Biggie yeah, used Yeah, he it. needed it. Yeah, he needed it. <laughs> means he had he a lot of them He's back dead. home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> First place you're going when we can travel safely? New Zealand. Portland. Oaxaca, Palm Mexico. Palm Springs. Oaxaca, Mexico. Yeah, honey. Decent. Okay. What piece of culture or trend died out but you would like to see make a comeback? Say that again. What Thanks. piece of culture or what trend has died out but you'd like to see make a comeback? Don't think about it too much. Every, everything that we love ha has come back because it, <laughs> we're so '90s. And we're like, man, I wish steps. Would, exactly. I wish steps and Jordans would come back. It's like right. all that's back, you know. Sorry, exactly. I wish hanging out on the stoop and smoking weed would come back. It's there. It's yeah. back. <laughs> Guess what? Like, the dream of the '90s is alive. I was gonna say it's like MC Hammer pants. 80s synth music, but that's back too. So yeah, it's all back. Everything we love is back. This is our shit right now. <laughs> See, you, you, you were into all the good stuff then. Yeah, Crystal Pepsi. How's that, Crystal Pepsi? Oh, Crystal Pepsi. I forgot nice. about that. <clears throat> that was, that was weird. That was confusing. That was confusing. That's a mind fuck. That that, that is screws crazy. your mind up because you think it's gonna be like Sprite. Yeah. Mm. That's confusing. It okay, burns, anyway, yeah, Charles. It burns so good. All right, uh the 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 song that got you all like like that song that got you into music. Uh Paul Revere, Beastie Boys. Eye of the Tiger. Um I love that song. Mine would be It's Tricky by Run DMC. Decent. Okay, what's your what's your favorite character from a TV show, movie, or book? Um, Hawk from Spencer for Hire, the the original boy, the original joint, not the not the not the Mark Wahlberg, not the Marky Mark. From a TV, movie, or book? TV, movie, or book? Um, uh, I like um, Peggy from Mad Men. Um, I like uh, I don't know. Christian Bale's character in um, what's that movie? Newsies. The one no. you were in? No, no, no. Like American Psycho. Psycho. Man. Oh, Psycho. American Psycho. Nice. Um, uh, what have you been binging uh, during this time? Netflix, Hulu, whatever. Binge watch. Oh, well, I was gonna say Huevos Rancheros flavored <laughs> egg curls from Lesser Evil Snacks. That works. Um, <laughs> Harold's I Chicken. The, the whole season of Lego Masters with my fam. Oh, yeah. Which is dope. It's really good. And me and my wife are watching a show on Netflix, I think, called Atypical, which I highly recommend. It's very good. Um, I really haven't had time to watch any television. By the time my kids go to bed, I'm ready to go to bed. But the one thing I do usually fall asleep to is either um, a like concert movie. They're like putting out a lot of concert movies. There was a great Sylvanesso um, concert movie as well as um, they, uh, YouTube dropped a Prince, uh, Prince in, the, in the Revolution movie. Uh, and I've been falling asleep to uh, Last Week Tonight, like pretty much every, with nice. John Oliver every, every night. But, uh, but if there's one thing I do want to get back into, it's community. That's, I'm really going to get back into that. Um, I watched... Uh uh jean claude van johnson um which is amazing have, you, have so you guys seen that show yeah is that good yeah jean it's claude really funny What's it on? van johnson yeah. it's on prime okay it's on, it's on prime it's okay amazing okay when, when when i can actually stay awake i will do yeah. it and they're, and they're real short like, they're, they're short okay, 20, cool. 23 29 minute episodes something like that. i'm on it okay. yeah i got you ready yeah. what is something that everyone looks stupid doing <laughs> the floss. Floss. The, flo the flossing. Making fun of others. Mm. Flip, see, I flipped it on. See, I flipped it on. 
Yeah, that's like a good after school special conversation like answer there. I think like we could also, I think I, you also like perform like Lala Kids in the future because that was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there might be something maybe, there. Maybe you... I got I got I got one more, okay? Uh and then just as far as like time for you all and our viewers, um what because you all are creating a very high, uh, you know, high, high content right now, uh, as far as like still producing content and still creating, um, which is so important for artists. Like, what would you give? And this can be a little bit of a deeper thing. What advice or recommendations would you give to all of the artists out here, actors, musicians, content creators, what advice would you give to us right now to stay active and stay creative? Don't be precious. Like mm. this is not a time to make your masterpiece. This is a time to crank out art like a motherfucker till you master some shit you didn't know you could be amazing at. Mm -hmm. And that and and take I mean, it, like this can be a, a, as messed up as it is and as many people who do not have an opportunity for a pleasant break right now, it can be a real, real good incubation zone for you. So, you know, take it and make it and give it freely and get better because you'll come up with new shit nobody else has come up with. And when you're the only one doing something, you're the best at it. Yeah, uh, I would just say, um, I mean, pretty much along the same lines, practice, 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 and whether or not it's by yourself or in front of somebody. And don't also feel like you even need to do it in front of somebody. If you were doing it, that is the most important thing, because when the time comes for you to do it in front of somebody, you will be prepared, whatever that thing is. Practice. Yeah, yeah I think, um so often we let our art be dictated by who is funding what and that is is an is a blessing to to have uh, to have that but it's it's a real gift to have the time to ask yourself deeply what do you want to create regardless of any kind of support from outside of your own intention. And um, so I would listen deeply to whatever that intention is and then do whatever you can that day to forward whatever your answer is. I love it. Oh, great. Great. I mean, look, I, I really appreciate spending time with you all over this last hour and just like getting to know you all a little bit more. Or well, just period, because this is my first time meeting you all. Uh, Jess? I, I'm just, I'm, I am grateful. You know, I mean, this is exactly what we we're talking about earlier is like virtual community and, you know, and getting to hang out with you guys has been kind of a gift for me today. And I leave with a fuller cup. I'm sure, you know, gee, it's kind of the thing you're talking about with like what you feel like coming out of a, like, you know, a boom room kind of experience, but like, what is that, what is that energy exchange? And I do think that we have these opportunities to do this kind of thing. So I thank you guys um, for being here today. I thank the folks that are in the room chatting with us for being here too and showing up for themselves. Um, these are community experiences. And so we're glad you're part of our community. Um, if you have anything in a cup, I'm going to do one more one more cheers. Uh, I'm gonna toast. I'm gonna toast to to virtual community and creating what you dream of in the moment that you made it. Yeah, yes, I like that. And thank you, thank you for having us and for creating this opportunity together. It's really beautiful. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you Cheers, for inviting us. Much love. No, much love. All right. Well, um, in closing, I'm gonna say to everyone here. If you, you know, Buggin' is for all ages, and it's, what platforms is it on, guys? Everyone. Yeah, all Everywhere. All the platforms, wherever you, wherever you find your music, you can find it there. Yeah. There you go. So, so go look up Buggin', enjoy yourself some, some jammy jams. Um, look up these guys, follow on social media if you haven't, and join them for some of these kind of virtual opportunities and engagement experiences. 
um, and keep this party going. But yeah, that's uh, that's my plug for my my friends, my my Q gents here, my Q brothers. Um, thank, thank you, Charles. Nice to meet you, Charles. We're here uh, Wednesday for five cocktails and conversations. So I hope you all can come back and uh, cheers. 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 Much love. Peace. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.